in any case, hopefully you did enjoy this video. Uh, I will split it in two parts because it's probably gonna take too long to watch it uh, in one entire video. Ride and watch hentai all the time with Senpai. My soul is fermented by a sucky bitch. Call assist, pants are dripping from the way I spit. Fell in love with this. Hello and welcome back everyone, the name is Gahengu and the game is Pokemon Duel. You already know where I am and what I'm doing, I'm right here with my Rush deck and I'm doing pretty fine. Frankly speaking, I'm not doing as great as I would wish. People think that I, this deck is just immaculate and it's unbeatable and you can't deal anything against it, but if you check out my duels this month and the wins I have this month, it's not as impressive as you might think. I do get to win right about now the most of them because at the start of the month I lose like crazy, but the wins and the loses that I get losses are pretty much uh, balanced out, frankly speaking. I don't feel like I win more than I lose. Lucky for me, of course, Pokemon Duel Company decides to put my spotlight as a uh, winning duels that I have instead of the losing ones, but I did keep a few uh, losing duel IDs because I do believe that there is the need to showcase a little bit of how to deal with this deck. Frankly speaking, right now, the meta is still Lunala and Coco. Lunala, Coco, Sol Galeo, and potentially just maybe, I don't know, Jax attack from not so much anymore, but uh, the Altaria and, and, and Zoroark are like taking over completely. Zoroark especially, if you check out like this, team has Zoroark, Lunala, this team has Lunala, Coco, this team has Coco, this team has Zoroark, Coco, and Sol Galeo, Coco, 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 Lunala, Coco, Lunala Coco, you know, L Lunala Coco, not, not Solgaleo, what do you call him? Solgaleo, Zorark, Coco, you know? You can see clearly what's the meta is by just going to Feature Duel and understanding what's happening. For me, this Rush deck has been built for over six months ago, but now with the introduction of Zorark, I am in my element. Even uh, Care Bear said it, now with the introduction of the Zorark in the, in the game, the Rush deck of Kahenkyo is going to be like very relevant. And if you don't know who Care Bear is, there's going to be a link to his channel up there, you know, the um, card section. Just go ahead and check him out after you check this video. And it does really make a difference because when you do, that concept was born in the idea of like, I don't want to have long games. I want to have a game where I either win or lose, goodbye, play another one. That's basically how I started doing Rush Deck videos. And that's why this concept was born in my head. But right now it's a little bit tilted because Lunalas and Solgaleos can actually nullify your Rush deck, and how can you really deal with that? Or how can you deal against a Rush deck? I do also have a video about how to deal with Rush decks. It's pro probably outdated right about now, because it was made six months ago. There were a lot of figures not yet in the game. So you can go ahead and check it out, and I'm definitely gonna update it soon enough, because this is really becoming a problem. And if you don't believe me, it's becoming a problem. And this is a screenshot from earlier, before that. If you see some that are doubled, it's because they were shown in new Spotlight and Legend accordingly. But if you just go ahead and pause, I'm just gonna scroll really fast right here. But if you go ahead and pause, by the way, typical Deoxys player, like, why the fuck do you disconnect? Another Deoxys wrecked. But what I'm saying is, it's becoming very freakishly common. And how do you deal with it? How? 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 Well, one simple answer. You can find it in Feature Duels. That simple answer lays in Lunala Solgaleo. Lunala Solgaleo is probably in every deck. Lunala Solgaleo, Tapu Koko, is in every deck. And you either play as them or you either play against them. And you either win or lose depending on your chain levels and your RNG. You can't beat RNG. And I can prove to you that you can't beat RNG and you can utilize your Pokemon just because that's how the game is made. If you match up your Pokemon against something that doesn't have the favorable RNG against you, you're probably gonna win. And if you don't win, that's because that's the RNG, you know? You're probably gonna lose. But if you win, that's because of the RNG and you can't do anything about it. I actually think I got, yeah, I got featured here. I watched this duel versus N Sleepy, my former clan. I didn't actually uh, literally leave the clan. I just left the Discord and I'm assuming I got kicked because I didn't use the N before my uh, name. But um, Drag is still there. We're in good, um, in good references. I can still join the clan if I decided to. And if he accepted me, of course, that's the pre preset there. But Drake is awesome, so maybe I even ask him to do my Discord. A new Discord, by the way, uh, for me. Of course, I'm gonna pay the dude. He's not doing it for free. But let's check out a little bit of this duel. This duel happened versus, I'm repeating myself, and Sleepy. Uh, it reminded me of Sleeper of some sort, but uh, it's not Sleeper. 
So what the dude cares? It's X Speed, Scoop Up, Max Revive, Pearl Jam, and Mutinite. Why? There we have Zabdis 104. We have Coco, no C levels. We have Lunala, one C level, but a lot of levels. We have Mewtwo, one C level. We have the Suicune, and we have the Zoroark without any C levels, but a lot of um, EXP into that. So that deck isn't that scary. But the dude is 3,700, which means he utilizes his great, not so great in C levels matter deck very efficiently to go ahead and climb this, climb this high. I know that it's not easy to be in this tier because people right now are absolutely very knowledgeable of what you have to do and how you do it, that they just counter whatever you have to send out. So how it starts here, I send out my speed form to, to grab the entry and now I try to counter his Mewtwo because I don't want him to become Mewtwo wise. So he takes out his Zabdos and I'm gonna take out my Coco. But just because he has a Zoroark, I know that I can't attack. Plus he's gonna block his you know, side, so I can't attack it either way, and that's good enough for me. I do like the pressure that I keep on there, but he wants to kill my Zorok with his Lunala, and I'm gonna not gonna allow that. I don't like his Lunala anywhere near that, and I'm just gonna send out a little bit of my heal. And frankly speaking, I do that so I can just surround. I am really cool with sacrificing my Coco to get a Lunala out of the way. You should know that about me if you play against me or whatever not. I will always take a sacrifice over something that you already have and it's better than my entire deck. So I go here with the Mega Gengar against the Mewtwo. And recently I watched a video of Showtime. If you don't know who Showtime is, there's gonna be a link down there, up there or whatever. And he claimed that Mewtwo Y is the best EX after Gengar or whatever not. I disagree completely. Gengar is the top. The second best is probably Sceptile. And I do believe Sceptile is the top because Sceptile is awesome as a single EX and it can be better as a UX just because we're not gonna advance on that everybody knows what Mega Sceptile and Sceptile does but what happens here I do apply the toxic and he's gonna go ahead and attack me with uh, or I'm gonna attack him or whatever I'm gonna attack Zabdas I don't know what happened there I missed a little bit but the toxic against a roost is not gonna matter I'm not gonna respin I, I don't care if that Zabdas gets uh, you know the weight it doesn't matter to me I wanted to kill the Lunala frankly but he fortified his Lunala, and he's gonna go X speed against me, hoping that I roll a Toxic once more. But, uh, my freaking Mega Gengar doesn't feel like rolling a Toxic the third time, but it's gonna be the Abyssal Grip. Gonna send out that side-striking dude away to the PC where he belongs, because he's pretty much uh, toast. He's not as great as people want him to be. But in any case, though, those seven turns of mine are still running while the Me Too wise turns have already ended and unfortunately those seven were a little bit more than the two that he lived or three and i'm gonna grab the entry there's still a zoroark frankly speaking just because there's still a zoroark i only really want to keep on attacking on stuff i could have potentially you know made a little bit of a uh, contagious terror there to make a win or whatever not but i'm not and freaking sucker punch it's getting me every time this dude rolls a sucker punch every freaking time except when the Lunala rolls their freaking Moon Guy's beam, and I'm like, dude, that's the only thing you have to roll right now. Why don't you? <laughs> you know? But in any case, I'm gonna swap spot here. I'm gonna sacrifice that Coco for the Lunala. I'm in an advantageous position. I do have both entries sealed, and right there, I'm good enough. I'm good enough. You know that I'm gonna be doing that. The dodge towards an ice beam is gonna be plain enough to survive that turn. I didn't want to lose there. I could potentially unfreeze me with my speed form, but I want to bait his Suicune to go aggressive. And I want to do that because I know that I can max revive my Coco, and my Coco could potentially keep her busy for a couple of turns so I can defend, you know? Because Coco has the Mele Mele Wish, she has the gold towards the, uh, you know, sure gold or whatever not. I do have a little bit of trust in my Coco. Even though that's a stupid idea, you should never trust your Coco because he can always roll a miss and he can always die because Suicune decided to roll the sheer gold and you'll have to ex attack your speed form because that's the only thing that can back can go back in time and try and attack this. And if that gold rolls against anything white, I'm toast. Oh, but that miss though, that miss. He could roll a dodge easy piece because that's what I had expanded, but this keeps the game going. That was a clutch roll. And he knows that I don't have any swap posts left, so he goes freely and attacks my new. Shuttle flip is gonna keep me alive. That's good enough. And right here, I decide to go with my Gengar because I know that he can't get back with the uh, with his Zabdas without risking anything. So he's gonna take it back with his Coco. And I'm like, all right. Free entry. There we go. Pre setup of the speed form allows me to grab a free entry. And now he has to attack with his Coco. And that's good enough. Contagious Terror. 
This is pretty dope. Contagious Terror could mean a win right there because it was his turn, though he's only getting one. Wait, it was one my turn. It would be a lot better. But god dang it, his max revive is going to make him, you know, stall a little bit. And I don't really want to attack right here. I don't want to do anything. I just want to waste his turn. I want that Coco to die against my Gengar. And he kills my Gengar. Like, dude, come on, just die already. That freaking Coco is just... And in-game right there, I waited a while. In-game, frankly speaking, I didn't move that speed form for a really long time because I didn't want to move it. I, I just wanted to keep it right there so the Coco has to attack. But the Coco doesn't decide to, you know, Zabas did. My speed form didn't die. I send out a little bit of my Zora closer. So he's not okay. I'm just going to take out my Coco and start attacking. But he can't take the Coco away unless I, uh, you know, do something about it. So the Psychic against the Thunder Crush of 134 comes in and I'm like, Are you shitting me, man? Just a dodge or a purple or something? Of course, I know. I should have. I, I would die there. It doesn't matter to me. But what I do here is just because I lost that, uh, that, uh, thing that speed form i do have my coco and i send it on the other flank because i know that now i bait him to take him away and now one shadow flip guarantees me the win and i'm not gonna get it and i'm like come on you come on you come on you like you could shadow flip that would be a win gg will play thank you very much and he frees his entry point and i'm like all right i don't want to risk it i know that i began the ganger i i just don't want to risk it i don't want to do anything stupid that you can go ahead and, and advance and whatever not i could attack that coco and maybe kill it on whatever but it didn't, so he gets the free entry again. And this is potentially the greatest comeback of comebacks because now he can do whatever the hell he wants. And I'm like, all right, that Lunala is gonna storm through my entire team. I need to backtrack a little bit of my, of my uh, something to do something about something because this is uh, this is looks Prima, yeah. And even my Coco is gonna die to the wild charge. And I'm like losing all faith in my Pokemon right now. And I'm like, please game, just, I'm losing right now. Let us not get the Psychic Shot from this Mewtwo go. Let us take this Zoroark away from it because it could happen. We don't want it to happen. Let's take it away. All right, we take it away. It's good enough. He's going to grab the entry and I need to attack here because if I don't kill it, the Coco will come. If I kill it, you know, I get something done. He's having a free space in the PC and he rolls a freaking dodge towards my cross counter. And I'm like, this is the grimmest moment in the history. This is the potential of the comeback after comeback after comeback. He can kill my speed form in just one attack, damage on damage, anything. So I need to kill the Coco. Lucky for me that goes through. But now, he will attack my speed form with his Zora. And of course the speed form will die. Because that's the majority of what happens. You know, the, the, the sucker punch is always rolling. We already know that. And I'm hoping that he's going to roll that sucker punch one more time against whatever else I have to offer. Please roll it. By the way, just because just because everybody knows how to play against Zorak these days, uh, I play a little bit of ahead of the competition, and because everybody has their Gengar going and attacking my Zorak freely. You know what I did? Just a little tiny trick. I expanded the 111. It's 111 right now, so anything below 1, 110 will get killed by the 111, and anything above 110 has the potential to die by the 90. Basically speaking, I'm covering two sides of the same coin by having this wheel right here. And of course, RNG is RNG. You can't be RNG. I'm going to be repeating that. But this just makes it so much better when the Solgaleo tries and attack you that he gets either, you know, the 111 and gets knocked out or get the cross counter against the other thing. It's 50-50, basically. It doesn't go, well, not 50-50, but it's like in my favor most of the time because I do have the potential of knocking it away without being punished about it. So that being said, that being said, we're going to play back here, and he's going to take out his Mewtwo backtrack. And I'm going to send out my Mew, a little bit of the aggression, because I know there's going to be the Suicune coming up, and I want to pressure that Suicune. I want to pressure it. I don't want it to do anything about it. But there's going to be the attack on the Gengar, and the Gengar decides to go like, Contagious Terror, bro! And this is, I believe, I played a misplay, because now it's my turn, and I send the Zora. Instead, if I had sent out my Mew backwards, he would have to scoop up something. Whatever that was, I could grab the entry point afterwards because one, two, three, one, two, three, the second turn, entry point until his uh, Contagious Terror has worn off and he would have something on the bench, you know, because that's the only plate he can potentially use. He does that and I can't punish him for that. But I do go for the play, for the biggest play of my life. I go ahead because I know that Zabdos doesn't have the chain levels. He doesn't want 10 to counteract me and I hope for the damage. I do get it. 
And is this the greatest comeback after comeback? I don't know yet, because now we Oh my god, yes, double goes around. And of course he has the only Pokemon who can deal with that. He has the Mewtwo. <laughs> and I'm like half happy, half angry, and I don't know what to expect because that Mewtwo is gonna attack. And uh, I really, really, really want to get rolled just the gold, and he's gonna roll the freaking damage. And I'm like, <gasps> I can't believe how I won this game. But it happened. And Sleepy, absolutely great play. I did a lot of misplays there. The game was up and down, back and forth, but I do grab the victory right there. I don't know how I held with my teeth and my nails, but I did it.